Yo, what up, Full Sned Squad? Welcome back to the channel. That's a new one, Full Sned Squad. Did you guys check out yesterday's video with the 350Z reveal? Here she is, if you didn't watch the video. Not the most dopest thing in the world, but trading a salvage title, 160,000 mile automatic Forester for a 48,000 mile six speed clean title 350Z, I could not pass that deal up. Go check out that video. It's pretty dope. Bobby was trying to guess what kind of car it was. Judging by, I'm looking for packages. Judging by the exhaust note, and she never got it right until she saw the back end of the car. But today, we are going to be working on the FRS once again. So we're still just kind of going around buttoning up the FRS. I did buy the antenna block off plate, which I got in today. That little guy right there. That's just set up on my roof right now. I haven't like screwed it down at all. I just wanted to make sure it actually covered the hole because it's for a Honda Civic. So we got that. We get a package in from Subaru today, which includes some trunk carpet stuff and then fog light inserts or like the fog light grills. But the main point of today's video, we are going to be powder coating and installing a set of Brembo brake calipers and rotors onto this FRS. The color is so sick that we're doing. I already have the fronts coated. I did them a long time ago when I did Bobby's Genesis, Genesis, when I did Bobby's Genesis Coupe Brembos, but I do have the STI rears. We gotta sandblast them and get them powder coated. So it should make for a pretty dope vlog, guys. Sit back and enjoy this video. This thing is gonna look freaking nuts with the new wheels and with these Brembos on. Those stock brakes, gotta go. So guys, let's check out what we're working with. So here we got probably the world's crustiest Brembos for the rear. We got some Brembo stickers. Here's the fronts, all finished up. And then in that box down there, we have front rotors, the rear rotors, and some new pads. The first thing we are going to work on today is sandblasting and powder coating these brake calipers. That is the sandblaster I'm using. It's made by Trinco. It's pretty, pretty nice blaster. And the powder coat we are using is called, I'll throw it on the screen. It's kind of like a weird name. As always, supplied by Prismatic Powders. Go check them out. First link in the description box below. Literally the best powder coat powder you could ever ask for. I've never had one single problem with it. I'm not even the best powder coat applicator, like far from the best. I don't have the best equipment and their powders always turn out 100% perfectly. So yeah, go check them out. First link in the description box below. Let's get to sandblasting these calipers. It's actually really nice that these are super crusty because sandblasting all of this crap out here is gonna be a lot easier. It's all lifting on the backside. So that is what I'm gonna do right now. Let's get these things blasted up, get all this coating off and we can get them rebuilt. So here is the difference between a fully sandblasted, prepped, good to go caliper versus one that has not been touched yet. This stuff is absolutely disgusting. I'm not lying when these are the most disgusting calipers I've ever touched in my life. Like there's pitting, look at the pitting. That's gnarly, damn. So the next thing we need to do is pull apart the calipers. There are four Ellen head bolts on the backside, pull all those out. There's two bleeder valves here, pull those out. There's both 10 mil or maybe 11 mil. And then we gotta pull these pistons and all the seals out. I'm pretty sure all these pistons are stuck. So it may take a bit of finagling to get these pistons out of here. What I'll use though is just a flathead on that lip where the dust steel sits, kind of pry it out and then you can kind of just wiggle it out with your hand or set of pliers. All right, we finally got all the bolts out. Unfortunately, we did ruin two of the bolts. So one I had I drill out completely, the other is stripped out. So we need to go grab two new bolts. Before we do that though, we can get all these cleaned up. I'm just gonna bring them over to the sink, grab some degreaser. Actually, we do have the oil seals to pull out. Let me show you how to pull those oil seals out. Just grab a super small flathead screwdriver. Very, very easy to do.
The calipers are all cleaned up. Next thing to do is to mask them off. I'll have some of this green powder coat tape linked down in the description box below. I think it's about $20 for a roll. Before I start masking them off, I am gonna get the oven preheated. This is just a regular oven I found off Craigslist for like 50 bucks. So I'm gonna throw it at 400 degrees. Press and plug it in. So while that's preheating, we can go ahead and get these things masked off. The only thing we're masking off is where the pistons go. So just this little piece right here. And then we can just bolt them back together. And the reason for that is I want the bolts to be the same color as well, which is that beautiful color right there. The calipers are masked and plugged up, ready to be coated. So the next thing we're gonna do is come over here, hang them up on this rack right here, and then we're gonna put them in the oven for a total of 10 minutes. So while the calipers are in the oven, let's go ahead and get this powder coat gun and the powder system set up. So this is the Eastwood hot coat powder coating system. Not the best in the world, but it does the trick for just some dude at home. It's pretty simple to use. I've already explained it a few times on the channel. Powder goes in the hopper, hopper sprays onto the gun. We have the one end that goes to the wall. We have this clip right here that is supposed to be a clip, but it's a little destroyed. That's supposed to clip onto the part. And then we have this trigger right here. So as you're spraying the powder, you hold down this trigger that electromagnetically charges the part, allowing the powder to stick onto the caliper until you can get it in the oven and get the powder baked on there. All right, we're all set up here. Let's go ahead, pull the calipers out of the oven. We're gonna let them sit for about five minutes, let them cool down a little bit. Then we can attach that clip right there onto a caliper. We can get the caliper sprayed out and then get them back in the oven. I've realized in the past using this isn't very accurate. So these bake at 12 minutes, 400 degrees, part metal temperature. So basically when the calipers reach 400 degrees, that's when you start the timer for 12 minutes. What I'm gonna do to just not use that thing at all, I'm gonna have them in there for a total of, let's do 18 minutes. Six minutes should be plenty of time for those calipers to get up to 400 degrees. We got the calipers back in the oven. If you guys want a more in-depth, detailed tutorial video on how to powder coat calipers at home, I'll have a video up in the top right hand corner. Go check that out. It goes much more in-depth than I am doing today. I figured I've already done it so many times. I don't need to go super, super in-depth with every single video. I'm still showing you guys the basics in this video. I figured while we are doing the calipers, while we already have the powder coating system out, I'm gonna go ahead and do the brake rotors as well. They're still new, they're not rusty yet. And I do know eventually they will start rusting. So the hub area itself, obviously not the, the area where the pads ride, I'm gonna be powder coating those silk satin black from Prismatic Powders as well. So it's just like a very neutral black, not high gloss or anything. It'll look pretty good on here. So let's go ahead and mask off the area where the brake pads ride, and then we can get these things powder coated as well.
All right, the timer for the calipers is done. This is definitely the most fun yet most nerve-wracking part of powder coating to see if they actually came out how they should have. Those look freaking incredible. One more thing that is absolutely crazy, the powder coat changes so much color after you get it out of the oven and they cool off. So they are very, very yellow right now. They're gonna turn a lot more neon when they cool off. I'll show you guys now and then I'll show you guys here in a minute. Actually, I already have a powder coated caliper right here. So let's show you guys the difference. This one's cooled off, obviously. It's been sitting around for a while. That one's fresh out the oven. Look at the difference, guys. Much more neon. That's one, that one's like straight up yellow. All right, we got everything powder coated, all good to go. The last thing to do before we actually get them installed onto the FRS is get the new seals in and get the pistons back into the calipers. So the first thing we need to do is pull these caliper halves back apart. So there's just the four bolts on the back side. Next up, we have to install the oil seal into the caliper first. So it is that very small seal right there. I will be using a bit of assembly lube that I use to build motors. Yeah, that's what I use on calipers. It doesn't really matter because the first time you, or right when you bleed them, it's gonna push all that assembly lube out. So I know people in the past have commented why you're using assembly lube. It just helps the pistons and the seals be installed much easier. We're pretty much done. Only thing left to do is get the brake pads installed, those bleeder valves, and then we can get them on the car finally. So we have everything laid out. This is everything you should need to get Brembo's onto your FRS or BRZ. These are the front calipers off of a Cadillac ATS, 2004 STI front rotors, the brackets and hardware for the front Brembo's rears. These are 2004 to 2007 STI rear Brembo brakes, 2004 only STI rotors. Now I know I have every single thing we need for the front because I've had them on this car before a long, long time ago. I don't know if you guys remember that when they were orange. The rears, I don't know if I have everything I need. I may need different e-brake shoes. Let's hope I don't. All the front mods are already done. The only thing you gotta do is drill two holes out and tap one of the holes. It's super easy to do. Go check out the video in the top right hand corner if you wanna see how to do all that, guys. All right, let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is obviously get the car up in the air, get it on jack stands, get the wheels off, and then get the stock calipers and rotors off. So since we know we have everything for the front brakes, that is what we're gonna start with. First things first, pull the brake line off of the back of the caliper. I'm just gonna use this 12 millimeter wrench, pull that off, make sure you have a drape pan underneath, it's gonna leak out some brake fluid. Then there'll be two 17 millimeter bolts holding the caliper to the hub. So you get the caliper off, the rotor should just come right off. If the rotor doesn't come off and it's stuck on there, grab an eight millimeter bolt and thread it into this hole right here. It'll act as a pulley and pull that rotor right off the hub.
So we got the caliper and rotor off. While I'm up here, I am gonna be doing extended ARP studs just because I'm having to run small spacers uh, with the new wheel set up to clear the Brembos. So all you have to do guys is just pound them out. There's plenty of space right now while everything's out to get these things out of there. So we got all of the studs installed. Let's go ahead and throw on the rotor and caliper. This is gonna look so damn good against the black. It's just like Bobby's car. The It's actually the same exact color as Bobby's uh, Brembo's on her Genesis and then a black car. Oh my gosh. I will spoil it a little bit, guys. We are not doing black wheels this time around. I'm sure that's gonna make a lot of you guys happy and probably some of you guys sad as well. But I think all black with black wheels is just a little bit too much black. Well boys, just like that, we have the whole assembly installed. That looks so freaking good. The one super dope thing about powder coat on calipers is you don't have to worry about the brake fluid peeling off the powder coat. Obviously on paint, brake fluid is gonna peel it right off. I've never, had, never, never once had an issue with peeling powder coat from brake fluid. So that is super, super nice. Let's go bang out the other front side and then we can move on to the rear. I'm really hoping we have everything we need, but I guess we'll see. What I'm actually gonna be doing next, guys, is ceramic coating my brake calipers. I did this on my STI, and it is so freaking amazing. I will be doing the whole car eventually, probably within a few days. But while I have the wheel off, I figured I might as well ceramic coat the front calipers. If you guys wanna pick up some ceramic coat, it'll be linked down in the description box below. My discount code is DVN25. It'll save you $25 off of one of these kits. It's pretty easy to do. I'll have a video up in the top right hand corner if you wanna go watch an in-depth video, but essentially, I'm gonna wipe down the caliper with isopropyl alcohol. Let's see, get a bit on there. Give it a good wipe down, get it all clean. Oh yeah, gotta keep them clean. They're pretty dirty, they've been sitting for a while. But next thing we need to do is obviously ceramic coat it. So being that it's a caliper and not a flat surface, I'm just gonna open this up, wrap this thing around my finger and drip a little bit of the ceramic coat onto the applicator pad. Usually what you would do is wrap the applicator pad around this block right here with the soft end. You'd use this for like a, the body of the car. But being that, but being that the calipers are not a flat surface whatsoever, I'll just use my finger. All right, so we're gonna let the ceramic coat sit on there for about one minute. We can wipe it off. And, and then in about one hour, I'll come back and recoat the calipers. The only reason I'm doing two coats is just to make sure I didn't miss any areas. So it's been about a minute. I have this microfiber towel they included in the kit. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off all the excess ceramic coating. Basically what ceramic coating these calipers is gonna do for us, when you use the brakes of your car and the pads start wearing down, it creates brake dust, which usually gets stuck to your, to your calipers and your wheels like pretty badly. But when you ceramic coat them and you go to wash your car, it literally just hoses right off. So you don't have to worry about pulling your wheels off and actually going in there and cleaning them by hand. So it's really, really nice stuff to have. We got both fronts done. Let's go ahead, rip off the rear calipers and see if we have everything we need to get the Brembo's on. Same exact process, two bolts for the caliper and then the one banjo bolt for the brake line. All right, boys, we do have a little problem. We are gonna need some adapters 
for the rear. As you guys can see, that bottom is lined up, but the top is way off. And I did a little bit of reading online, which I should have done a long time ago before I attempted this. And you do need an adapter for the rear as well. All right, guys, so it's actually now the very next day. My plan was to go inside, go on the computer, overnight a set of rear brake bracket things that I needed for the Brembo's, but it turns out they are out of stock for two more weeks. So I'm not gonna wait two more weeks to finish up this video. And not only that, I do need different rear brake rotors as well. So you don't use the 2004 rotors. I don't know what exactly is different, but you have to use the 2008 rear rotors, but those are 5 and 114. So what you have to do, either buy a set of like DBA 4000s or something, or you can buy the 08 and up rotors and redrill them to be 5 and 100. So it's kind of kind of confusing, kind of a long process. What I can do today though, is I got a box in from Subaru. Let's go ahead, open it up, show you guys what it is. We still need to put that roof antenna covered thing on. I'll have that link down below. But before that guys, everything I've used in this video so far, the powder coat, the powder coat gun, powder coat tape, the seals for the rear, and all the stuff for the front brake Brembo's, I will have linked down in the description box below. Here is the box we got it from Subaru. Got some clips. Fog light cover, fog light cover, and last but not least, the trunk cover. First things first, let's go ahead, open up these fog light covers and get them on. It's actually kind of funny. When I bought this bumper, I ordered everything I needed and I somehow ordered the 2013 and 2016 bumper or the fog light covers. I don't know how that happened. I went off a part list from someone on the forums and they must have had that part number on there wrong because all I did was just copy and paste. But thankfully they're like, eight dollars a piece so it wasn't a big deal that's how it looks without the cover though and that's how it looks with the cover much cleaner now let me show you what this guy is all about i feel like every single frs owner should pick one of these things up frs's didn't come with these brz's did so this cover is going to be covering from right here to right here which is 100 percent perfect because all this bolts and hardware for the apr wing that i put on here it's not very clean looking but when I get the cover on there like that, oh man, that is gonna be much better. Oh yes, that is so much cleaner. If you have an FRS, get one of those things. It's like $40, I'll link it down below. You need, I think it was six clips as well, which I'll have the part number down below. Pick one up, they look sick. I have another question for you guys. Leave a comment down below what you think I should do here. So before I had the wood trunk set up, I still have it. Do you guys, I mean, it's kind of torn apart right now, so don't mind. Do you guys think I should keep the wood exposed or should I put the OEM carpet back over the wood just so it's kind of stock looking with just a nice looking air tank, which I should probably like clean back up because it's kind of disgusting and the manifold. So should I leave it wood or carpeted? What do you guys think? Drop a comment in the comment section below. All right, bros, the last thing I want to do today on the car is get the antenna delete installed. So here it is, guys. It's literally just a small carbon fiber plate, which covers that hole perfectly. Honestly, I could leave it just like that, but you can kind of tell where it used to be. So that's how it's gonna look. It's kind of contoured to the roof. That looks so much better. Just a nice, clean, simple roof, no antenna whatsoever. I had the stock FRS antenna on here with that long ass, freaking antenna hanging off of it. It wasn't the shark fin one and it was super ugly. So I figured I never use the radio. I might as well just delete the damn thing. Now, if this roof was not vinyl wrapped, I'd have to probably put steel into around this thing and cover up the hole better. But being that it's vinyl wrapped, obviously water can't get inside of there. So all I'm gonna do is throw some double-sided tape on the edge of this thing, slap it on the roof and call it a day. I could drill it on, but I don't really see a point of drilling into my roof. So yeah, double-sided tape it is. Oh yes, I can definitely approve of that message. That is so much better. That's that's a game changer, game changer 2.0. It's a shame we couldn't really get the full Brembo installed done today, but it is what it is. That's literally how building cars go sometimes. Same thing with the wheels, we can't build the wheels yet. These things look absolutely amazing. I can't wait to get the rears on the car and then this thing will probably just sit here on the stands because these wheels, my factory FRS wheels aren't gonna clear these front Brembos. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Everything I used in today's video, including that antenna delete thing, I'll link down in the description box below. That antenna plate was like $30 off eBay. So I'll link that down below if you guys want to go pick one up for your own FRS or BRZ. Peace out, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you. I'll catch you in the next video.